It's Jeannie here today. I am so glad to be joined by Hollywood actor Lucas Black, uh, probably more familiarly known for the Fast and the Furious franchise, tons of television shows in Hollywood. But today I'm so happy to talk to him about an incredible film, Legacy Peak by Affirm Films and Pure Flicks. Lucas, I was just watching it and brushing up on it. It's such a good, family-friendly, heartfelt, inspirational film. Talk about wanting to uh, kind of dive into that kind of content. Yeah, I appreciate the question, Jenny. So, um, you know, 2019 um, was when I finished up. Uh, NCIS New Orleans. I did 125 episodes and and decided to leave the show in the fall to spend more time with family, uh, to really connect with my heavenly Father, uh, to spend more time with my wife and be present in my in my kids' life uh, lives because there were plenty of days where I would go to work and they would still be asleep and I would come home and they'd be already in bed. I mean, the first three seasons, uh, you know, it was normal to work uh, 514. So I'd be working 70 hours a week. And uh, just fortunate throughout my career, I've recognized that, um, you know, that kind of schedule and, and the, the way the entertainment business is run and a lot of temptations that come with it can be really destructive to uh, families' lives and, and your relationship with others. Um, so you kind of have to be intentional of uh, implementing margin in your life. And um, really, you know, it, 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 it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of godly people around you to, to hold you accountable. But um, after I decided to step away, you know, we took a year off to really just uh, reflect and rest. And uh, we were praying what the next step was going to be. We saw a huge culture shift here in America. Um, and for a long time, you know, I feel like um, movies coming out of Hollywood and, and, and in entertainment has undermined the fatherhood role. And so uh, we're at a, a homeschool convention and this pastor who is a co-producer on Legacy Peak, Eric Ludy, he mentions he has a friend uh, who wrote a script, which is Aaron Burns, who uh, co-wrote it and directed Legacy Peak. Um, and that was about it. But he sends me the script three three months later, and um, I read it. My wife read it, and she comes to me with tears in her eyes and says, "I don't know why you wouldn't be a part of this project uh, because it's one that really uh, sheds a good light on fathers. Uh, it mm -hmm. shows the need uh, of a good earthly father. Uh, it mm -hmm. shows how." Uh, we can find our fulfillment and love from our Heavenly Father. And um, it really, you know, is one that's going to empower the nuclear family uh, and especially fathers out there. Uh, you know, my character gets to use masculine traits to really protect the innocent and provide for them and, and shows uh, transparency, transparency to connect with the kids in a special way. So, Super blessed to be a part of it. It was a, it was an answered prayer uh, for me and my family, and uh, just to have uh, something, you know, come to us like this was uh, God orchestrated the whole thing. Mm. Well, you're an incredible actor, and I'm pretty sure this is just the beginning of a lot more content like this coming your way. Uh, it was really good. Your role was great. Um, I genuinely just truly appreciated the way, you know, I think sometimes when we watch, you know, media, we see those masculine traits are usually, uh, you know, paralleled with, uh, you know, tough it up or I can do this myself. But I think what was so beautiful about your character was that you defaulted to God, you know, first. And then, you know, you did, you use what God gave you to, to protect the kiddos. Um, Lucas, I want to ask you before we dive a little bit more into the film, can you share with us a little bit of your own personal testimony? It's beautiful to hear, you know, you talk the, about your heavenly father and that be something really special to you personally. Yeah, I appreciate that. I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, you know, my parents, they were, they were those that, uh, that 
would drag their children to church every <laughs> Sunday. So, uh, you know, I've got a brother and sister and we were all in church on Sunday. And uh, so really blessed to have that background. Um, you know, I, I strayed from the Lord, you know, and fell to temptation, you know, throughout my uh, 20s. I was trying to do the Christian walk alone, you know, uh, traveling a lot, being in the entertainment business, you know, that that was tough. I really didn't have a strong spiritual family or godly men that I could uh, do a Bible study with or do life with that really hold me accountable. It really wasn't until about 2015, early in 2015, that uh, I was intentional about reading my Bible. And so I, I said, if I believe this, I, I need to sit down and read the Bible. I was convicted by the Holy Spirit. And uh, so really read, uh, started with the New Testament. I started with the book of John and just read it uh, in chronological order from there. Uh, you know, I would read other books out while I was reading uh, the New Testament as well. But um, that's really when my relationship with the Lord took on a whole new level. And, um, you know, I was that, you know, the all the chapters and books about the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, really spoke to me that he is our advocate, he is our helper, that I could rely on him. Uh, in times of trouble or when I'm feeling alone and traveling around that the Lord is with us wherever we go. And so uh, those kind of things were really uplifting and encouraging. And um, and then I got involved with a really great church in New Orleans and in, involved in a men's study uh, where I grew a lot and was able to, um, you know, connect with men that held me accountable and uh, so it's it's been a blessing. You know, I feel like uh, my relationship with him has really grown in the past seven years. And so, um, you know, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful. He's always been with me. He, you know, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. And, uh, you know, his grace has just shown uh, abundantly in my life. That's so beautiful. Love that. I know I grew up in the entertainment industry as well. And I know what that can be like. Just the level of rejection that you face, the level of temptation that you face, just all of that. So it's so beautiful to have. I know in the film, um, you uh, you know, it, show, it showcases the adventure that parenting is. In, in this case, it's a blended family and you coming into it. But I know you're a dad yourself. Can you talk, talk to that and just, um, and, and obviously our faith, our audience is faith-based. So if there's any of that that you want to, you know, add, it's fine. But talk about parenting and that being an adventure all on its own. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, the Jason Wilde character, uh, he's stepping into the fatherhood role. You know, he's uh, he's going to marry a, a lady who has two children, a daughter and a, and a son, you know, a teenage daughter. And then the, uh, the son is around nine years old or so. And so um, he's stepping into that fatherhood role, you know, and, um, you know, he, he, what I like about his character is he's not taking the passive approach. Uh, he's being intentional about connecting with the children. Uh, he has a plan, you know, and throughout the story, you see him referring to his notebook because uh, he takes notes a lot and has a plan, which is a good thing but uh, it kind of becomes a crutch uh, to him. And, um, you know, I think throughout the story, he realizes he's not in ultimate control. You know, he does uh, defer to his heavenly father when he needs help and he knows that he's under his authority, which I think is a fantastic character trait uh, uh, about him. But, um, you know, what's, what's unique about the whole thing is, as, as we know in parenting, it doesn't matter how much we prepare, uh, you know, our kids are going to throw something at us that we don't expect. Uh, life is going to throw something at us that we may feel like we're prepared for, but we're not. Uh, I think we probably all experienced that in 2020. You know, we all got punched in the mouth. But, um, you know, he, he takes a step of faith. You know, he's continuing to look into his Heavenly Father for help. And then kind of God orchestrates all these things. And really in the end, uh, what Jason wants happens. 
uh, through through a unique way. You know, um, he he wants to connect with the kids and he wants to uh, uh, have them respect him and love him, and uh, and that happens. Uh, but it's not the way he planned it, and that's kind of how that's kind of how it works sometimes uh, in life, and and how God has a has a different plan for us. But uh, but yeah, you know what's great uh, in the end, you see how he kind of um, uh, he really verbally affirms these children. He tells them that he loves them and that. Um, you know, he's proud of them and they're good at something, um, you know, and that's something that uh, I've learned to implement in my life uh, with my children. I think we've all heard, you know, the adage of like, hey, more is caught than taught. Uh, you know, you got to model it. You got to be the example. But I'm a firm believer that uh, you got to do both. You got to speak the truth. You got to speak the word. Uh, I think all throughout scripture, it talks about the power of the, of the tongue. And so, um, you know, you got to do both. You got to model, you got to be the example for our children, but also you got to, you got to speak words of life and, and, uh, our children need to hear that, uh, we love them and that we're proud of them and that they're good at something because God's, uh, uniquely, you know, created them with different gifts and abilities and talents, um, you know, and, and we need to, we need to uh, recognize those, but also just to, just to uh, affirm them that we love them no matter what. I know there's a story I use, I usually tell, like uh, if my kids playing basketball and they come home uh, or I'm watching the game and on the way home, I might say, man, if you would have dribbled you know, around the outside and dished it inside, you know, you might have, uh, they might have, your team might have won or scored, the, you know, the went the winning uh, two points. Um, and sometimes I get caught up in assuming they know uh, my love for them or that I'm proud of them, you know, and so I've just, uh, that kind of hit me. Uh, in a unique way, I think the Holy Spirit convicted me. And, and so I try to uh, verbally affirm them um, and let them know I love them no matter what. It doesn't matter what they do. And I think uh, in this story, uh, especially with that verse, Matthew 3, 17, when the heavens opens up and uh, God uh, says to Jesus that you are my beloved son. And um, that's the first thing you know, uh, that he tells them right before he hasn't done anything. That's before Jesus started his ministry. It's before he healed anyone, before any miracles. And so that was just an affirmation of who he was and how he was loved um, before he had accomplished anything here on earth. Wow, that's powerful. I'd never heard that taught before. That's, I love yeah. that angle. Because we do get caught up in performance a lot. Um, so that's that's super powerful. Uh, I, you know, I love the things that you shared because parenting these days, just with all the things that we're up against, um, just from indoctrination with what you watch and hear and see, you know, right. it's great to just, you know, know what to do with our own children. Mm -hmm. um, Lucas, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to add about the film, about faith, about um, just what we've been talking about parenting? Yeah, well, I encourage everyone to uh, to come out and watch it. And not only because I'm in it, uh, but I like you just touched on, you know, there's an attack. There's an attack in our country right now on uh, Christian values, on family values. And um, so uh, this is kind of our way of battling uh, our culture. And I think we need to really focus and be intentional about uh, what we allow to be seen on our screens in our homes uh, yeah. for our family. We really need to fight for our families and our children. So we need to be intentional about uh, what's coming through the television screen, the computer screen and the phone. So mm -hmm. this is an avenue for uh, everyone out there that wants to fight uh, what's going on in our culture. 
uh, to really have some wholesome entertainment for the family. And uh, so the more you guys watch, I know, uh, you know, it's a shameless plug, but the more you guys watch stuff like this, you know, the more we're able to make content like this, uh, the message is going to be strong. That's going to empower families uh, and empower, you know, Christians and encourage them and uplift them. Uh, so, you know, I just encourage you to go out and, uh, and see it because we're fighting this battle together. Uh, we got to stand strong in faith and stand strong as Christians and, and fight for our families. And uh, this is one way you can do it.